Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I understand there was some communication gap uh, and the timing uh, somewhere was mentioned 5 o'clock instead of 6 o'clock. I'm really sorry that you had to come in and come back. I think some people must have left. But uh, thank you for being here. Uh, it's very good of the library to have extended themselves to us uh, for this event. Uh, very grateful to, to them for that. Uh, I can speak a lot about Chef Goylo uh, because I've known him for very long uh, as a student and as, a, as my mentor uh, in various capacities. Uh, but uh, today uh, I'd like to uh, I've put down a little uh, couple of things around him so you know uh, who he is uh, professionally. Uh, chef Vernon Goylo is a professionally trained chef and has completed his studies from the Institute of Hotel Management in Mumbai. He's traveled extensively around the world, promoting Indian cuisine. Through his lectures, his workshops, and his demonstrations. At the invitation <coughs> of TAFE, that's the technical and further education, he was, uh, he's visited Australia and Mauritius on a government exchange program. He has sailed with the Silver Sea Cruises, the Queen Elizabeth II, that's Cunard Lines, the Cilia Lines, that's Finland, Regent Seven Sea Cruises, and Oceana Cruises as a guest chef, dealing exclusively with Indian food and spices, besides, of course, training the crew in the intricacies of Indian cuisine. He's visited Helsinki to develop an interest in the food of the sub Indian subcontinent in Scandinavia. He's been a guest faculty at the Cordon Bleu Institute, both in Paris and in London. That's probably the first and the best known culinary institutes in the world, founded in 1805. He's made appearances on television programs in the United States and in Finland to talk about and to demonstrate Indian cooking. In October 2000, uh, he was inducted into the most prestigious professional association of chefs worldwide. Uh, that's the Chalene de Chain de Rotisseurs in Paris. That's a globally headquartered, that's a body that's globally uh, headquartered in Paris. And up until the present, he's the first Indian in the hospitality education sector to be awarded this recognition. Though his first love remains teaching, and he's been mm. a chef instructor at my alma mater, and has molded and trained several thousands of uh, future chefs uh, through his uh, uh, career. He's a prolific writer and has written many articles in trade journals, magazines, and newspapers. And in the year 2000, he formulated the Western India Culinary Association and is currently its founding president. So that's uh, Chef Kono. And uh, uh, Chef, thank you for agreeing to do this. Uh, it's, it's always wonderful to have an opportunity to listen to your experiences because we learn a lot. And uh, it's not just uh, me. Uh, uh, Chef Salil has just walked in uh, just uh, for your information, uh, Chef Saril is, uh, uh, is also a part of the managing committee of uh, uh, Wicca. Uh, he is the executive chef of uh, Sahara Star and also the general manager, unless he's doing more than that. Uh, but but uh, good of you to, to take the time to, uh, to come here for chef. Uh, so, Chef Hoylo, uh, if we could start with what inspired you, uh, or who inspired you to get into the culinary world. Okay, I have to think, think really back now because I started in 1972. Okay. But uh, my interest in food goes back much, much before that. And I would say there were three, three women in my life, okay, uh, who uh, played a big part. Uh, it might sound like like a cliche, but my grandmother and my mother were the first two. 
as a child, when I was a very small toddler, I was, I think, an introvert. I didn't like going out too much. And uh, I spent my time with my dear grandmother in her kitchen. She, uh, she didn't uh, teach me how to cook, but she developed an interest in me in food. And uh, she was not a trained chef, but she was a fabulous cook. And uh, some of my uh, tastes come from her cooking. My, my mother used to work, so I used to spend most of my time at home with my, my grandmother. And uh, would follow her around the house like a little tail. But uh, that's where the interest came. It was later through my my mother that the interest to become a chef first grew. My grandmother didn't want me to become a chef. She thought I should become an engineer or a doctor, <laughs> like all old-fashioned people. But uh, my my mother encouraged me. She said, do what you want to do. If you want to become a chef, fine. My, my, uh, my mother was a, a different type of, she was a very good cook, but different from my, my grandmother. My grandmother barely used to teach anybody anything. Because there were no books in those days, no written no recipes. So my the mother, first of all, she was at work most of the time. But when she did at the time, she would observe what my grandmother was doing. But it was the old-fashioned type of, of learning, you know, to look, watch, and do. And she, uh, she was, uh, as I said, a picture of her. Her learning came mainly from the foreign magazine. That time was a big thing to read. I think mean, Women's Own and and Women's Weekly, which had a lot of recipes, but they were more continental. So that came from her, that uh, she would encourage me to also read a lot. And we used to always have books like this lying around the house. The third woman, I'll call her a lady, was the principal of my my college at the other, Tanma Philip, you might have heard of her. Very, very formidable woman, very strict. Uh, I think if there was anybody I was scared of with her, <laughs> others I was not scared of anybody. She was very strict, but I you know, passed it on to my students that being very severe with them. But I realized that it was important to mold and to train them. But she did instill a sense of discipline in me and I appreciate it now that it, it was, you know, not a curse but <laughs> it's just always and the more, uh, the more, uh, you know, uh, if you are good in your work, you be even harder on you. So, uh, I say, why is she sitting on my back in the future? Probably I was students. And then I was uh, mortified when she wanted me to join the faculty. And I said, no, 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 I'm not made to teach. She said, no, you don't know yourself, I know you better. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. I had to join. I don't even know, I'm already working at the Taj, so I can't just leave them. You leave the Taj to me, I will, I will leave them. She called her the hotel. I don't know who said that. It's Jimmy Lam. And from Shedda. And she told him he's not coming back. <laughs> This is the city. Come from tomorrow morning, it's a while, the, you only go take on your off day. Saturday, you go and give the doctor keys or whatever to your accounts and come back on Monday. No choice. But 34 years later, I was still there. So, it must be something good either what I was doing or what you. What, uh, or what was even going on against you. So any right. regrets? Uh, no regrets. If I had to do it again, I would do it all over again. No regrets. I enjoyed your teaching. Uh, because when you teach, you also learn a lot. 
and every batch was a new learning experience. The students bring so much to the table that you can learn from, and I enjoyed it. I don't know whether they enjoyed it because I used to be. Very strict yourselves. I think, but I thought that was the best way to groom and mold, especially chefs, because chefs life is hard. It is hard. You have to work hard, long hours, and Salim will do that. Yes, Salim. I'll talk less. So, 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 speaking about women. Uh, you spoke about women in your lab. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but and let's never got another one. Thankfully. Thankfully, I don't know. I think they had the experience. I wouldn't know. No, so that leads to a question of gender balance uh, in the kitchen. Professional kitchens, of course, we've got uh, Chef Mukda here, who's uh, now uh, looking after the food production at Catering College. Uh, but uh, otherwise, in professional. Uh, uh, kitchens, we don't find very, well, uh, very many women. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, yes, it is not not the women's fault. Huh? <laughs> it's not. There's not there's a lack of interest or lack of skill or anything of the sort. It was just family pressures. They couldn't devote too much time. But as I told you, it went back long hours, and you know the. The family would also be important for them, especially after they got married. Now, you know, women are changing their uh, their attitudes, and they're making it work for them. And now we have a lot of lady chefs who are doing well in the industry. But up to now, up to about say, five, six years, maybe ten years ago, it was very difficult to find a girl in the kitchen. They would join, they would do well, but they wouldn't go any. Any further, and the hotel would be reluctant to uh, promote them because they knew that they would leave in a little while. Once they got married, they would go. So yes, uh, women are as good chefs as their male counterparts, and uh, I hope more of them make an effort. They do add a lot of the glamour to the kitchen, <laughs> if not. <laughs> <laughs> they bring a lot. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, you've had many interesting incidents in your kitchen. Uh, can you recollect uh, something that that comes to mind? Uh, whether it's at your work, uh, you know, in, in the industry that you worked, or at uh, the uh, hotel or school kitchens. Most of my time was spent at the institute in in, in the kitchen over there. So whatever incidents happen, happen in the training kitchens. And every day I used to wonder what new is going to happen. Because <laughs> there's always something you know, happening with them. And there were students. I, I knew that, you know, that I shouldn't expect too much out of them. They come to learn and they will make you know, mistakes. And that was fine. As long as I tell them, as long as they don't make the same mistake again. But I remember one time we were, it was in the bulk kitchen. 400 to 500 portions of food were being made. Ginger pudding was on the menu. Very simple dish. And I briefed them how to do it. And uh, I left them to it because by now they were in, in the second year. So they, they didn't know the way about. And then after it came out well, you know, beautiful, light and spongy, and after it was steamed nicely. And uh, then we got ready for the service. All the food was taken out onto the service counter. And I was standing behind the counter watching what was happening. I noticed that the food was going out. The students were picking up their trays, but when the empty tray was coming back, all all the ginger pudding was left behind. One spoon was eaten, all the custard was eaten, but the pudding was left behind. So I was wondering what happened to this in the pudding. I went inside and I tasted one piece and almost spat it out. I said, what what the hell did they do? You know, because it tasted ghastly. 
So call that group which made the India pudding. What will you do? And they told me very nicely exactly what I told them. And then I noticed at the side there were two packets of of ginger powder. I said, the ginger powder is here. What did you put? They put pepper powder. Oh. <laughs> which, which looked, which looked very uh, sunny. Don't give my God that you are bad. Not me, for sure. <laughs> Not you. I mean, I've heard this again. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's why. Just in the, oh, okay. the culprit. But, you know, okay, okay, share somewhere and this is being recorded. <laughs> and then on Facebook or something. You can share it after that. <laughs> Another time they made, you know, caramel custard. You all know what it is. Very basic, <coughs> simple, you yep. know, dessert. Again, nobody was eating it. <coughs> they had not put the sugar in it. <laughs> they were supposed to eat the, the eggs and the sugar and add hot milk and then <coughs> set it in, in the oven. They beat the eggs, put it on the sugar, put the essence, put the milk, and it set because the egg is what sets the thing. But obviously, it had no taste at all. But can you imagine like 400 people worth of food? What? I should tell them next time you make a mistake, that you won't sit and eat the food before taste. <laughs> if it takes you one week, you can shoot. That's, that's, uh, uh, always interesting to hear of uh, so many incidents that you've oh, had. Fill one book, fill uh, one book. So, so I have I many, many I other questions. I have many other questions. Oh, uh, uh, so uh, you've taught so many thousands of uh, students to become chefs. At what point or at what stage have you found during their training, first year, second year, third year, that these this particular person or these people are going to be really great chefs and the rest are, how do you differentiate, how do you figure out uh, which are going to be the good chefs? Uh, difficult to, you know. Are there some traits uh, uh, in, uh, of a good chef or is there something there that you've seen? A lot of them want to become chefs. They want, they're very uh, keen and they, but they come with the ideas of watching master chef and they think that they can do it. It's not so easy. And it's very difficult to tell them, you know, that you're not cut out to be a chef. You have other options in the industry. But some of them plow on and then they don't do well and I feel bad for them. But yeah, you look for this passion for food, which shows whether it's their interest, whether it is, um, you know, the uh, extra work that they do, they're like, at the institute we had a lot of extracurricular activities, things like trade fairs, theme dinners, uh, outdoor parties which we used to cater for, they would always come in and volunteer. And you knew that they, this was first for them, not uh, going for a party or, you know. Sometimes they would come and say, no, we can't come because we have to go. The ones who are really interested would a sacrifice a lot and uh, it's shown in their, their sometimes the skill you know develops over a period of time but as long as the interest is there uh, we are able to mold that so then you would invest more time in those students who were uh, 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 more time much as yes after the after the college hours i spend a lot of hours uh, after college going through books with them and you know working with them whenever they needed extra guidance. And then I was, they would come and tell me, send us to train during in the vacation. So in the vacation I used to organize for them to go to train in some hotel or in some other weather. And uh, they would do, they would, you know, sacrifice their the vacation to learn. Because learning on the job is the best way to learn. In, in the college we can teach them the theory aspects, but mm. it's in the on, the on the job that they really learn the practical and the practicalities of uh, of the industry. 
So uh, some of your students have gone on to become celebrity chefs, uh, like uh, Vicky Ratnani or uh, a Michelin star chef like my batchmate uh, Vineet Bhatia. Uh, so did you know that these people are going to become celebrities or what is the difference between I a celebrity chef and a, and a real chef? <laughs> I don't know, I didn't know they were going to become you know, celebrities, but I knew that they would do it okay, in whatever they chose to do. Lately, the media has become, you know, very, very prominent, and some chefs know how to make use of the media for their for their promotion. So there's nothing wrong with it, you know. And if they uh, become well known, and they are encouraging others to join the industry. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's difficult to what exactly they are going to become. But that they're going to do well, I, that much I knew. And if someone wants to become a chef, uh, whether they are a home chef or whether they are professional chefs, do you have any advice for them uh, what they should be developing besides, of course, the technical competency? See, I look for uh, three things in a good chef. In a student who won't go there and want to become a good chef. One is knowledge. They must you know, develop and read and uh, increase their knowledge. In the college, you don't really teach them that much. And it's up to them how much further they can take it. And that is up to them to uh, you know, develop. Of course, you give them the inputs, whether it is in the form of uh, notes or handouts or books. We have one of the best libraries in the college for food. Huh? Unfortunately, not many people use it to its full extent. They come back afterwards and say, can we use the library? Because then they, they realize the value of it. But uh, knowledge is very important. Without you know, knowledge, you're not going to go, go anywhere. And knowledge is not just about food, but about nutrition, about hygiene, sanitation. All that is also important. The second important thing is the skill development. Now, nobody's born a chef. So they have to, uh, to develop the uh, skill in them. And if they're interested, if they show a lot of interest, the skill comes very fast. Because they're showing the interest in it. The third very important factor for a good chef is his attitude. He has to have the right attitude to survive in the industry. It's difficult. It's a difficult job. And you have to sacrifice a lot all those are chefs over here will testify to that. While others are uh, enjoying uh, Diwali or the Christmas or whatever, the chef, especially in the beginning of his career, is working hard in the, industry, uh, in the hotel. They really have to slog while others are enjoying themselves. But that is a commitment there to the industry. Speaking about commitment, speaking about commitment, speaking about commitment. Sorry. nobody said about it. I know you said it was easy, but becoming a chef is not an easy task. You have to sacrifice a lot. And uh, many people fall by the wayside, you know. Twenty people might join a hotel, but only about four or five will, will complete the program of, of training. So you were speaking about commitment of uh, your students and the chefs. There's one question I've been meaning to ask you on that for a very long time. And that is that you nurtured all of us uh, over the time that we were there. But so many of your students, you've continued helping. After they've gone out in the industry, you've helped them connect with one another, help them get jobs. You've given them career advice. I've watched you helping them personally to the extent of even financially. Why? Self-satisfaction. I did it for a self-satisfaction. I enjoyed 
to working with them and keeping in touch with them. Uh, they also would come back and connect with me. So I enjoyed meeting them even after several years. But uh, that's a feel good factor for me when I see some experience, especially who have done well. Sometimes they're not even you know, become chefs, they become something completely different. But as long as they're doing well, you feel that you play a small part in their their success. Yeah, I, I understand that feeling. I understand that feeling. I, I don't really quite care to uh, you know, become chefs. Yes, the program is hotel management, and uh, the chefs you know, program is one aspect of it. But uh, they kept in touch. Yeah, it was good. Okay, now time for another incident. If you recall any other incidents in your kitchen, some uh, something naughty or something silly uh, uh, that that comes to mind. There's something difficult to tell you, know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there was there was one one student. He was it, it was the first year. He was uh, clueless what is going on. Like many of us who were. Yeah, first year. And I did, they were doing a simple dish of fried rice. And I told them, you know, you pick and wash the rice first. The next thing, everybody was doing it quite correctly. And I saw this fellow standing in the sink and vigorously washing the rice with soap and water. <laughs> What, what are you doing? He said, you told to wash. I'm washing it properly. <laughs> I said, yeah, but who told you to put soap? He said, you didn't tell not to put soap. <laughs> I realized that, uh, that giving instructions is very important that you give correct, precise instructions to the students. Otherwise, they interpret it the way they want to, and uh, you can't blame anybody but yourself. <laughs> Yes, they blame you. <laughs> what else? Uh, Something okay. I remember about potatoes you told me. Oh, but was that your batch? Selling your batch? Why me every time? <laughs> no, no, I'm just trying to, to correct which batch this was. Uh, again, in the, all these incidents happened in the bulk kitchen in the second year. And there was this. We had large scale equipment you know, to, to process the food. Whether it was to cut meat or to, we had this big you know, machine to peel peel potatoes. The potatoes. You had just to put a sack of half a sack of potatoes into the big drop. Open the tap, let them get washed nicely and then switch the machine on and the potatoes will get peeled. So it was a task for one person to do. So I told him, Cyrus Marfati, I was not your batch, no? no? Okay, that's not your. <laughs> Cyrus was a, a Parsi boy. Nothing against the Parsi, no? <laughs> but he was in a, always in the world of his own. And uh, he was listening to the commentary of a match which was going on quietly. We were not allowed to, but those days, you know, transistor and earphone. And he had hidden the earpiece behind his chef cap and all that. So difficult to tell what he was doing. And uh, even something exciting was been happening in the match. Either somebody got out or because they hit a six or well, I don't know. I can't remember now what the incident was. He forgot about the potatoes. And they kept going round and round and round and round and round. Until I noticed a big pile of scra the the scraping, you know. Which was piled up behind and there were big like bounciness. So I don't say what 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 are you doing? Then he suddenly woke up from his stupor and put on the machine of course first. There were small you know, bubbles inside. <laughs> Full sack of potatoes <laughs> vanished. So was he punished? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs>
Ну, бог это поклощ. Это
but it, I enjoyed the setting up of the institute. And, uh, so you avoided uh, many of the mistakes uh, or things which you would like yeah. to correct, uh, which which you didn't have yeah. control over the, the, earlier. Pro the problem was uh, when you uh, like when you work for the government, you have to follow certain norms, whether they are right or wrong. Like the syllabus, uh, you had to stick to it. You had to cover that. Of course, I used to do much more than the syllabus, but uh, you know, that was the way I was. I made sure that they had all of their plate. They didn't know that I was teaching them more than what they required. Sure. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. Now for a trick, a trick question, I'm, I'm telling you in advance. Uh, what is your favorite cuisine and your favorite dish? Now see, as a teacher, no, I can't have any. I, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, but in fact, I have to teach everything and show as much interest and passion as whether it is, uh, you know. Indian. But actually, I mean, showing interest is fine. Actually, which is your favorite? If you were to, if you were really to say. If I have to choose, yeah. I like uh, Thai food and an Italian food. I think they are full of flavor, very much like Indian food. And I know that there are nothing like, like one another, but uh, you know, the palate is attuned to uh, that kind of taste and flavors. So yes, I would, if you were to fill me down, Thai and Italian. Of course, my uh, gold food I enjoy, because that's my own food. So yeah, we have a recipe that uh, Chef has actually yeah, put down. I have some printouts uh, of uh, one single dish uh, that he particularly likes. So I'm going to pass it around after this. So, you know, I've seen... Uh, well, the, the, yeah. This recipe, is, you know, I told you there were no books or handwritten recipes for this. But my mother used to write down sometimes, I watch to see her mother do it. So I found that book of hers after some time. And the, this you know, recipe was from there. It worked you know, very well. Although it, she was looking and writing, but I found things like one fistful of red chilies. <laughs> mother, what is this? Because by that time, my, my Indian grandmother has passed away. Mother, what is this fistful of red chilies? I think that's what I saw her doing. She <coughs> got one, put her hand, uh, her hand into that dabba of red chilies, and that was it. Was one, one cigarette tin of rice. <laughs> they had these strange, you know, milk. one sear of milk. I still don't know what is one sear. I mean, I know it's a measurement, but how much is it equal to? But yeah, this so was this recipe that was taken from that book. Okay, so that should be nice. One of uh, yeah. Chef's uh, family inspirational recipes that is being passed on. It's not a secret because my your mother, my my grandmother would not tell anybody anything, <laughs> but my mother would happily <laughs> <laughs> tell all and sundry. Okay. So, uh, I've I know that a lot of your students feel gratitude. Uh, you know, when I when I spoke about this uh, event on Facebook, uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, positivity coming your way from across the world. Uh, and, and I've seen gratitude in the eyes of many people towards you. And one of those, or a couple of those, that group of people that I saw that in uh, was the Indian Navy, INS Hamla. Uh, when I accompanied you, uh, could you share a little bit about what you did for them? You all know that INS Hamla is the, the uh, a training school for the Navy. And they train all kinds of of uh, your know, sailors uh, in uh, artillery and all all kinds, and they're cooks. So they've got a catering school over there, which uh, is run by the navy for the navy. I mean, they they're trained specially to uh, work on ships of the navy. So they wanted to upgrade their their infrastructure. So they asked, they came to the college and asked 
whether the college would be able to help them. So the college said to me, go and have a look first and see what do they want. So I went and then I developed a kind of a bond with them, you know, very nice people and went out of their way to do what I told them to do. So uh, yeah, I worked with them for some time and uh, very rewarding, very nice. Okay. One last question before I throw it open to the audience if they'd like to ask you some questions. Uh, in the recent past, uh, between your diabetes and your loss of vision, you've been quite constrained and yet you're here today and still doing what you love best, that's sharing your knowledge about food. So how do you see uh, things going forward from here? What are your plans? One day at a time. I don't know what's going to happen you know, tomorrow. I always look at it this way that, okay, it will happen to me. I will live a full life and no, no regrets that I should have done like this and I should have done like that. But uh, uh, there are people worse off than me. So I consider it to be part of life. And uh, I, now I tend not to plan too much in advance. It depends how things go. And then I said, one day at a time. Okay. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, invite you all to ask any questions that you may. I'll come, acro I'll come across and, and give you a mic. I'm sorry, you can just, uh, you have something to say? No, no. Actually, I would like to show today's uh, interview. <coughs> I was like in traffic, so I would like to do a small setup so that I can. No, we are already do done. Proper coverage and I can shoot the whole thing. Okay, so if you okay. can give me five, ten minutes and take a break for five minutes, so I can do the whole setup. Uh, so now it's a little late. We just have uh, time. I know, but I don't know. Who is that? That's Swaroop, no? No, no, it's not Swaroop. Who is that? Okay, let's move to questions. Swaroop? Yes, it is. I know, I can make up from your watch. Was he always late in college? I used to call him the late, late Swaroop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he recognized you uh, by virtue of your voice and your face. Once again, we are being schooled. Uh, <laughs> My parents had, had a passion not only for food, then the eating part of okay. and uh, But he was also very fond of dancing. Oh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> he remembers. <laughs> you know, he remembers batches. He'll see somebody after a long time and he'll figure out, oh, you were in this batch and this is your name and this is what you did. And that's amazing how he remembers so many people. Sorry, I'm going to tell them the story. I'm stepping out. You want to go away? No, please continue. As I said, he was very interested in, in dancing. And uh, in the college, I was also looking after, besides you know, the kitchens, I was looking after extracurricular activities, which meant a lot, wide range of things. <laughs> so he, there was some, programming here and one of it was on dance which was that time he got away what? he ran away he's gone to get the camera person at that time the the dance was choreographed by Terence Lewis yeah. have I heard of him? yes yeah. he's a batchmate of this boy you know, he's what he's done, done hotel management and he was putting up the show there. Must be one of the first shows they're putting up. And after they 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 used to practice. And I went one day to have a look to see what they were doing. And I saw this fellow. I said, what is he doing over here? He said, I'm, I'm dancing. I said, no, you're only, only practicing about like one small TV elephant. Every time he took one turn down, you knock one or two people down. <laughs> Oh my God. Now, are you wondering why? 
crocodile meat and kangaroo meat, but that is quite normal in some parts of the world. And what do you cook terribly? What do I? What do you cook terribly? <laughs> <laughs> is there something you cook badly? Like, is there a dish? Oh, I started very badly, yes. <laughs> I don't let out your know, TV secrets or something. You can tell if you want to. Yeah, I, I, can I have a question? Yes. Uh, see, I've inherited so many recipes and I've inherited my mother's recipe book, question one. But I find it frustrating because so many of the recipes had maida, sugar, ghee, or oil, fried stuff. All this according to nowadays is banned. Yeah. So I don't know how to proceed because uh, anything you want to cook, they say they don't use sugar, don't use maida, don't use bread. Exactly. Times have changed now because in those days, you know, it was okay to use all those things. Nothing happened to anybody. Yeah. Now we are getting all these lifestyle you know, diseases. Yeah. So we have to be a little careful with what we eat. Modify <laughs> the recipes or create new ones. <coughs> Because what our parents were eating and their parents were eating, it's not possible to eat now. They used to work so hard, they used to walk a lot. So you can't expect to have your lifestyle and their type of food. In the master chef, you know, they show us so much in master chef, so many of those things, I mean, of course, very difficult ones. You know, the other ones we can't make because they use so many things that are banned now. Don't exactly. use sugar, yeah, like don't use sugar, they tell us. Uh, don't use fried, they don't use too much fried food. What to cook then, you know? Because, uh, don't no, it's okay to have sugar and, you know, <laughs> maida, but not too much and too often. It's any, anything in... Uh, don't use red meat, don't fry your food, don't do this, don't do that. No, red meat also, it, it depends. It's not every day. I would not advise anybody to eat red meat every day now. Yeah. I did it and I'm paying the price. Mm -hmm. No, you have to do it in, in moderation. Otherwise, you'll be you know, missing out on some good things in life. Do it in moderation. Anyone else? <coughs> Anyone else? You were working with coke at one time, no? Yeah, but the oil then. At one time? Yes. <coughs> I remember I said, I sent the students to you for a sponsorship. Yes. And we oh, did. Wow. Yeah, you did, I know that. Yeah. But I just wanted to tell you those two bottles of rum which we drank when we had to put them in the chocolate <laughs> mousse or by Not chocolate mousse, it was the baba rum. Uh, oh, <laughs> we still have those with us. And, and the, the whole, all the teachers ate uh, the dessert without rum, so that went well. I, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew at that time only, but now what to do with the <laughs> I still have the old mom. They were good at those days. And the, you know when they do something they're not supposed to do, they will not tell on, on each other. Secret means secret. You know the code of thieves that they say. <laughs> Now I'll come and say hello to you after everything. 88 batch. That's correct, yes. <coughs> what are you doing now? Uh, I live in Germany. I happen to be in Bombay and I got oh. a text message and I couldn't say come and not see you. Wonderful. So yeah, I'll come and say hello once. Very nice. Good of you. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Chef, I'll go a little on the 
serious side i think it's our conversation moved towards the lighter part okay uh you've been going on and on for so many years so what is it that keeps you going what is your energy <laughs> factor your motivation factor you want to know yeah too, too late for you but don't get married <laughs> 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 your life is your own then you can do what you want when you want yeah actually God, actually i can i can what he said i can relate to it because when he said that even after the college hours is to stay back with the students doing yeah. um who were who were interested and, and and spending time with them yeah with mean, you you just there you just there <laughs> no no but that was only a joke yeah of course <laughs> so what's the real so, so you still have to answer that <laughs> What's the secret? No secret is live. Do do things as they come. I enjoy doing whatever I did. No regrets whatsoever. Okay, so uh, Swaroop has uh, set up this camera. I don't know what they're going to do with the camera. Swaroop, you'll have to tell us, are you going to be dancing or something? Because you finish asking all the questions. I finish asking my questions. Uh, you'll have to answer this. Why don't you come here and do a small, small performance? I will let the camera get set up and do the performance. Huh? I said let the camera get set up and do the performance. Still not set. Sorry? Still not set. You only said once, Chef, that good things in life take time. Sorry? I'm very upset with you. Why? Because you didn't invite me to join the Chefs Association. I have to invite you over. You go on. Did you go on to the net? Uh, net is down. So <laughs> <laughs> you go on to the net, download the form and send it. What so, so difficult is that? Actually, I'm this is invite you. This just gave me an idea for another question to you. Uh, You've heard the best excuses. from all your students <laughs> you just heard one just now again i so how do i try to book on all your excuses uh, do you remember any of course please please tell us uh, <laughs> some excuses some of the bizarre uh, ones that you heard there was one student called david pace i don't know why all names of where where are, where are your favorite batch right? <laughs> <laughs> actually maybe that's true Uh, but I don't have any any favorite batch. Huh? I don't. I don't. I don't get every batch. You all have my favorite batch. Yes. But the real thing is coming out now. <laughs> so David, he was he was very very serious fellow. One day uh, he he came late to class, and he started this excuse. that uh, i was alone at home in the morning and uh, my the puppy ran out of the house before i could close the door okay. so i had to run behind him and all over the place and i finally caught him but then the door closed so i didn't have the key to open it so i told him auntie now take the door and take the key from her and i was very sick so i could have made this up you know? <laughs> and uh, Then I had to open the my door, put the, the puppy inside, then close the door, then go back and give the key. Why did you go back and give the key? No, because then my mother would come back from church and she needed. I said, okay, okay, go now, you know. <laughs> so a few months later, he had gone for a training, and I had gone to the hotel for some work, and uh, I was. Talking. I was had to meet one of, one of the managers over there, and he told me just wait, I'm coming. What what to do? One boy. This was David Pace coming, <laughs> and I could see him. You know, David giving him some story. I didn't go anywhere near there. Then he tells me this boy from your college, as I know. Then he says, what excuse is giving me? <laughs> what <laughs> excuse? <laughs> This dog ran. So decades later, he still. He still keeps on talking about the dog. Yeah, he's still talking about the dog, right? I said, so, you know, and then I told him that, and then he went to go and bring the key from Nadia. Yes, he said, can you believe this? I said, yes, I believe it because only that time he was a puppy. 
you'd like to share that comes to mind either fun or uh, educational for uh, people no, those, uh, those of you who have you know uh, children, neighbors brothers, sisters, want to become chefs I mean by all means encourage them it's a very good good profession but they will be, be prepared for hard work and uh, Understand that they can do well. Otherwise, they might have to be done. Quite hard work. Long hours, especially once you go to, you start your job, long hours, and uh, sometimes you know the bosses can be a little sticky. Very often, you know, I have to not interfere, but go and talk to some of the chefs. The, on their behalf. Huh? Now they've already finished with me in the college, they're working and still I'm interceding on their behalf. <laughs> <laughs> but the chefs are also my students, so they, they would understand. The Lord of Singh, no? Oh, sorry, from the ITC. Uh -huh. There was one student who wanted to become a chef. I told him, you no, know, you will not become a chef because not in our hotel, I think. You become a home chef. And his mother was the one who was you know, pushing him to become a chef. I told her, you don't force him to become a chef if he doesn't want to. You don't start. He was good in cooking. I said, you'll start something at home. Do some bad foods or. Because he was good in cooking, you are good in talking. So uh, <laughs> you do the marketing. No shit, this shit. You get him a job, get him a job, and he was not getting. Finally, I called him to the hotel and told him, please take this fellow. Because, uh, I told to Laura, who was the, the immediate chef, like, you know who he is. So, be a little easy on it because he's not very fast, he's not very quick. Then, two months later, the mother's on the phone again to him. Now, what happened? They're not changing his department. <laughs> I said, no. So what do we do? I can't tell the hotel now change his department and do this. They'll change the time. Nobody is getting bored over there. I was getting you know, irritated with her. Still I called up. Kaurav said, what's the problem? Why are you not changing his department? You think chef is in the basic pantry where they're only making sandwiches, the most simple things. He's not learning the work. He's so slow. I said, I told you about this. So let me be there. No, I may not say anything. Let me be. Then he got, I think, fed up after some time and he left. But yeah, sometimes it is the parents want them to do what they want to do and it doesn't work out then. It doesn't work out. No. Yeah, that would be 
Queen Anine that's here, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, so is still set, you're still setting up? Yeah. I mean, what, what do you, I mean? No, no, you can't continue, you can continue. I'm just going to do it, continue. Okay. Now we are making up stories. <laughs> I'm sorry? Recipes. Now we are making up recipes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, I'm going to hand out some of, uh, I've got a printout of one particular recipe of Goan Prawn Bal Chow. That's his <laughs> uh, uh, recipe. More like a pickle, yeah. but as Chef has secretly told me, he eats it like a vegetable. Not vegetable, but like as a main course. Main, main course. course. Okay. Yeah. I eat it as a sandwich spread. So this bukli pao, you know, you know what? Yeah, bukli yeah. bukli yeah. pao. Yeah. Is, uh, we have we have a bakery close by here. Uh, when it's fresh, from the oven, bring it home, let it cool down, <coughs> it in half, stuff it with this broad bacha. So I'll just pass it around and, and you want to have a question? Okay, I'll just pass it around. And can we have samples of tasting the balcha made by you? Yes. <laughs> you can take one and Next. pass it on. Let's <coughs> get back to the final. If you, if you wish to, if you wish to have a copy. We're all listening to the same. We're all the same recipe. It's just copies of that. Awesome. Yeah, just pass a few here as well. Next time we have a session with tasting them. Ah. <laughs> yes. yes. That would be good. So you'll have to uh, delegate that uh, task? The thing is now, we don't get, actually I thought about it, but we don't get brought down <coughs> than the uh, good, good quality in terms of the uh, weather. The whole thing are going out. Have you gone to the farms uh, to look at uh, sourcing of food? Yeah. Or in terms of sourcing, do you have any experiences in that that you would like to share? I went to one in, uh, in it was uh, aquaculture. They were preparing prawns into it. Very interesting. I, I thought, you know, the taste would not be as good as fresh prawns. But no, I wouldn't tell. Where is this? Can be. Huh? Yeah, this is the Gambit prawns. Yeah. Uh, Ask Vikas if he's still involved with any other food for. Safe? Vikas safe? Safe, yeah. You're doing some work for that. Yeah. You only organize a way to go. So, so I went to this ABC farm, is it? Yeah. Pune? Cheese, guys. Manufacturing cheese. So, uh, anyone has any further questions? Where is the best vada pao in Bombay? Where is the best vada pao in Bombay? Arvind, Arvind is asking where is the Outside best Outside Kirti College. Outside Kirti College. Close to uh, Close to our college. We haven't yet discovered it. No, it's very good. Yeah. Is there a name for that? Kirti College. Ashok Vada I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't <laughs> ginger pudding. Yeah. <coughs> ginger pudding, she says. Ginger pudding. <laughs> this is the easiest recipe. Spot cake <coughs> with ginger powder in it. That's it. And instead of baking, you steam it. I, I remember some of the recipes that uh, we would cook in college. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, it would really. Uh, um, be memorable and sometimes memorable not in so good a way. <coughs> like there was this cabbage fugat which was with uh, uh, with uh, coconut, grated coconut and uh, cabbage. Uh, and uh, then there was blamange which was this uh, jelly like uh, uh, like uh, dish but it was not transparent, it was like completely opaque. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
some nice uh, nice memories uh, any any uh, particularly nice memories uh, in college or with, with people that you have all funny ones okay the one one incident they were making uh, ussal marashi menu and ussal the previous day they tried the jalebi so they they tried it and it keeps you know yes i know <laughs> now this was my match i agree <laughs> <laughs> you are sorry sitting there and all the memories and uh, they tried the other batch tried the jalebi they they before that so the fat was still there you know the properly good fat so when the time came for this this batch to fry the masala they told ask which oil to use and they used that fat from that jalebi pan strain it and use it so they said okay there was little extra so as they put it there was pot of oil over there put it over there no no i didn't tell to use that oil i said uh, take that oil and empty it out into the main pot of oil where where at the there is oil so i saw him going there he must be clearly he poured this that happened to be Sugar syrup from the jalebi. Not the oil. Not oil. It was sugar syrup, but it looked, you know, when you have used sugar syrup like uh, on the jalebi, it gets, looks like oil. They pour it inside, and it was fat. So after a little while, that fat came to the top and and solidified. So <coughs> it became soft. Nobody. And the blue water that means. Till the time came to fry the masala for the ussal. Which oil to use? I will use the oil of the of the jelly beans lying over there. And this fellow went there. He saw that fat, but it was not hard, but but semi-solid. So now I heated up and melted. Now he poked his finger in and saw there was liquid oil at the bottom. So he poured that out into the pan, and he's coming in. The it was telling me that oil is the fat is spoiled. Is it spoiled? Oh, but fat gets spoiled. Is it come and see? I went to look. Even I was. What had happened to him? You know, that sugar had crystallized in the pan. He had made it hot, and it it, it crystallized. So he didn't understand what is happening. He got got spoiled. Did I understand <coughs> what was happening? I told him, "Where did you take this from?" So I was inquiring. He got panic, scared. He put all the all the masala and everything inside. Oh, what are you doing now? You know, you have to throw the whole damn thing out. Forget about that. He's now put the ussal also inside. <laughs> We had two two uh, new desserts that day. Pasal. Okay. All right. So there's uh, there's some comments on the Facebook live. If you okay. Want to just from all uh, of your yeah, students, like a lot of your up, students. We'll read up those uh, comments. If you want to hear, you want to have a few minutes. Uh, uh, this is going live. Yes. yes. Oh my. So, so <laughs> we'll now just, tag uh, everyone one, you talked one, about. One <laughs> <laughs> you can just hold the mic and uh, and I'll read out the no, comments uh, to you. You did take oh, a few names. You can't right. raise that now. Now he can't. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, Bianca D'Souza saying, "Looking good, Chefy." Uh, then we have Nikhil Yadav saying, "Lovely to see, Chef." Uh, Dipali Ale saying, "Good to see you, Chef." Um, there's Avril who says, uh, "Thanks and brilliant. Wish I had been there." Uh, Bornali says great seeing you. Bornali Barua says great seeing you, Chef Coelho. Uh, Sarika Kamble says it's great to see you, Chef. Sarika is one of the few few lady chefs who now become the executive chef. No, not just a chef, but a big boss. Nice. Uh, Gunit Singla says a true legend and a super loved one too. Uh, then there is Chetan Jange who says, Chef, good to see you. Uh, okay, 
Yes, Sukumar Maharathi has tagged someone and then Pradeep Sansgiri says, thanks for sharing the learning, Chef. Wish you good health. Puneet Banta says, good to see you again, Chef. Great. And Manjani Pujari, good to hear you, Chef. And Shilpa Dias, good to see you, Chef, after all these years. So that's a lot of your students. A lot of others who are not your students, so I've left them out. But these are all your students from around the world and across the country. Good, good. Right here from them. Because now I don't read new textbooks. Because not possible. But yeah. Well, they got to see you. Hmm? They got to see you. They got to see me. Great. So, okay. thank you. Any, all of you any for last words? Salil, you want to share anything about me? Yes, yeah, Salil, you want to say something? No, my first memory of Chef is when, obviously, when I joined the college, I went to his cabin, and I'm sure that's that's the memory of probably every student. There's one frame which used to be in his office. Uh, it says point number one: no, the no, Chef no, is no, right. No. The rules of the chef. Rules of the chef. The chef is right. Point number two. What the, chef the chef is always right. Point number three. Even if you are right, point number one applies. <laughs> and then the last one, last of this, the, of this was, a chef is always a, a chef, even if he's in his underpants. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first memory of. Uh, Interacting with Chef Cole in his office. <laughs> that used to break the ice with a lot of people. The one, one statement said with uh, the, the chefs are a rare tribe and breed, but we must stop them from from multiplying. So don't allow them to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this one, which uh, which you uh, told us very earnestly. Uh, that never trust a thin chef. <laughs> uh, True. Yeah. Then not not tasting his own food. <laughs> <laughs> or can't afford to. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Good. Any any uh, any last questions or last thoughts <coughs> from from any of you? Wind up. Okay. So we <coughs> on scared, uh, We wind up then. Thanks everyone for yeah, coming thank in. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Really appreciate and thank you uh, to MQ the library for uh, for allowing us to do this uh, for hosting this uh, session. So thank you MQ. Thank you.